The BBC says we shouldn't say certain things to burqa-wearing Muslims. They got some veiled women to read out hypothetical questions and then lecture the viewer about how ignorant and bigoted they are. I've got a few questions. You can't be a feminist and be wearing a burqa. If anybody was to say that to me, they would be like, oh, she's the biggest feminist you can find. Okay, so why did one of the first ever Arab Muslim feminist groups, the Egyptian Feminist Union, encourage women to discard their burqas. The very act of Arab feminist leaders like Huda Sharawi discarding the burqa was one of the symbolic acts that led to Muslim women in Egypt winning the right to an education. Rejecting the burqa has been an integral part of actual feminism in the Middle East for nearly a hundred years. If feminism is about a woman's right to make her own choices, then this is one of it. Really? Did the 16-year-old girl in Canada, who was strangled to death by her own brother for not wearing the veil, get to make her own choice? Did the four-year-old girl in India, whose father smashed her brains out on the floor after her head covering slipped, get to make her own choice? Why are children as young as three and four made to wear the burqa and the hijab at all? Did they get a choice? Do these women in Saudi Arabia look like they had a choice as they're literally herded around like farmyard animals? Did the woman in Saudi Arabia who wore a skirt get a choice? Oh no, that's right, she was hunted down by the police and arrested. The niqab is so practical. Practical? Really? <laughs> So practical. The niqab is so practical. Islam is so oppressive. Oh, but you're, you're oppressed and we want to help you. Okay, so if Muslim women who wear the burqa aren't oppressed, why do Muslim women in Iran literally call on Westerners to help them fight oppression by violating the law on head coverings? If it's not a form of oppression, why does Azra Namani, head of the Muslim reform movement, assert that hijab purity culture covers, segregates, subordinates, silences, jails, and kills women and girls around the world? If it's not a form of oppression, why do gangs of men roam the streets in Iran throwing acid in the faces of women whose veils are deemed to be too loose? If it's not a form of oppression, why are Muslim gangs in London threatening to kill women who don't cover their heads? I think some women are actually having to fight to be able to wear it. Really? Is that why the first thing that women in Syria did after they were liberated from ISIS was to discard it? Who's fighting to wear it? Last time I checked, ISIS was stoning women to death for not wearing it. Sharia police patrol all Muslim countries forcing women to wear it. Women exposing their hair is only one of the controversial crimes considered to be against local Sharia law. And by the way, we don't undermine a woman who no. does not wear the face veil at or the hijab all. at all. Really? So are women in Europe who are being beaten by Sharia patrol gangs for not wearing it being undermined. What about women in Sweden who are being refused service in shops if they don't wear it? Are they being undermined? Go back to your own country. When, when it's a problem, something happens. But when you want your curry, when you want your samosas, when you want the glitter, <laughs> when you want to put bindis on your forehead to go to wireless festival, it's all good. No one who puts bindis on their heads, which by the way, is a Hindu thing, so... Why are we even talking about it? No one who does that and then goes to music festivals is walking up to Muslims on the street and asking them, why don't you go back to your own country? Where did the BBC get these dumb questions from? It's cultural. It's never no, been Islamic. So it's cultural and not Islamic. Okay, so why do you wear it? I am wearing it for God. It's an act of worship. Right, so it's cultural, not Islamic, but you wear it for Allah, so it's Islamic. What are you hiding there? bomb. <laughs> yeah, why are you laughing about suicide bombings less than three months after a suicide bomber in the UK blew up a bunch of kids at a pop concert? I've also got a few questions for the BBC. Why are you using taxpayer money to normalise the oppression of women? Why are you trying to popularise something that's clearly abnormal for an open liberal society? Why are you also trying to normalise other backward Islamic practices like people marrying their cousins. Something that's caused a huge spike in childhood deaths in the UK of Muslim children. Why are you continually shoving regressive belief systems down our throats in the name of progressivism and diversity? Women being smothered in black cloths to obey the whims of a brutal, archaic, 7th century patriarchy isn't progressive. <laughs> Oh. <laughs>
What could be more triggering to libtards than my face and this slogan? Get your new premium quality, conservatism is the new counterculture t-shirt right now at InfoWarsStore.com and let the butt hurt commence.